transforming practice! What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is obviously part of a series where I focus on a specific director and rank that director's work from worst to best. I've done such directors in the past such as Paul Thomas Anderson, Wes Anderson, Spike Lee, Spike Jones. The list goes on and many, many more. You guys can check that out in my director playlist down below with all those directors. But guys, you clicked on this video so you know this time around I'm focusing on Scott Derrickson's films and ranking them from worst to best. Now I'm filming this June 30th of 2022 and as of said date Scott Derrickson has done seven films so I'll be ranking them from seven being his worst to one being his best and of course my opinion. Now if you're new to the channel keep in mind also this will not be including any short films, music videos, TV shows, none of that just specifically feature length films. So guys enough exposition let's get started. So kicking things off, number seven, we have Hellraiser, Inferno, a movie that, truth be told, there's only two reasons why I could see people watching this movie. One, because they're a Hellraiser fan, and two, because, like me, they're trying to watch all Scott Derrickson's films. Besides that, this movie is very disposable. Unfortunately, it's not a good movie um, at all. It's quite disappointing. I have seen the first Hellraiser, and I did quite like it, but this is just one of those movies to name a bunch of others where it's like, it's got a great premise, but unfortunately, the execution is just kind of like, meh. And it's very low quality too, unfortunately, but alas, that's why it's my number seven. Next up, my number six is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. This is slightly better, and uh, truth be told, it does have some interesting ideas, but unfortunately, the actual execution is pretty dull and by the numbers, unfortunately. Has some cool atmosphere, some fine performances, but overall, it's a movie that is quite disappointing, and uh, yeah, that's why it's my number six. Next up, we have my number five, which is Doctor Strange. Uh, some pretty cool visual effects. Benedict Cumberbatch is good, obviously, as Doctor Strange. Um, some cool directing flair from Derrickson. And um, besides that, though, this movie is pretty by the numbers of the MCU. Like, watching this, you can kind of tell that it's a Derrickson film, but at the same time, mostly kind of gets overwhelmed by the fact that with an MCU movie, you kind of have to follow a template, and this movie definitely followed a template to a T. Um, but Scott Derrickson managed to add some nuggets of his style in this movie, but you, you, you kind of have to get a microscope and kind of look for him. Um, but not a bad movie, just kind of a okay movie. And uh, that is why it is my number five. Next up, my number four, and this is going to be a controversial pick, but my number four is The Day the Earth Stood Still. Uh, that's right, the Keanu Reeves movie. I saw this when I was a teenager several times. I actually quite liked it. I haven't seen it since then, so maybe my memory is foggy, but I remember quite liking it. I liked how restrained it was. Like, it's a big blockbuster, but it's a movie that isn't really show in terms of the visual effects. There are a couple sequences that are towards the end mostly, but for the most part, it's a very restrained human movie. Um, that being said, Keanu Reeves' performance really isn't that good. Like, even as a teenager, I remember saying, ooh, that's not a good performance. But um, overall, I like the restraint of this movie. By no means is it a great movie or even a good blockbuster, but it is a movie that, I can't lie, I had fun with it, even if I do know that it is majorly flawed. But I liked Derrickson's directing here, and I also think that here is where I started noticing that, oh yeah, Derrickson has a style. And that is why it's my number four. Next up, my number three is Deliver Us From Evil. By no means a good movie. Similar to The Day That Rested Still, I like the atmosphere more than the actual movie. Deliver Us From Evil is a very by-the-numbers horror film. But early on, not really the case. In fact, early on, sure, I guess you could argue that it's kind of vibing off of The Exorcist. But even still, it kind of made it its own. Um, even if, obviously, The Exorcist is like billion times better than this movie. But this movie, Deliver Us From Evil, started out interesting enough, but as it progressed, it got more and more bogged down uh, into plot holes. And I hate that word, but this movie did fall into a lot of plot holes, unfortunately. Um, and also at the same time, by the end, I was kind of out. I checked out, not gonna lie, because it just kind of fell into a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of horror cliches, and I just I wasn't about it personally. But um, nonetheless, it's a fine movie. I liked it a little bit more than Day There's Just Still, and it's, it's why it's my number three. Next up, my number two is The Black Phone. So The Black Phone actually just hit theaters, and it was the last movie I had to watch before I could say I've seen all Scott Derrickson's movies. And um, I liked The Black Phone. I liked it quite a bit. Um, all the, you know, other entries that I just mentioned, I talked about Derrickson and how, like, you know, he's really good at creating atmosphere and everything. This is definitely one of the better entries in this list, not only just because of the filmmaking, but the fact that Derrickson really homed in on his style, and he did such a great job with that. Score is really good. Ethan Hawke's really good. Kid performances. Kid performances are actually pretty good. Um, it's not an amazing movie, but it is a rock solid movie that I quite enjoyed when I saw it in theaters. And um, yeah, that's why it's my number two. Next up, my number one, my favorite Scott Derrickson movie. And uh, I don't know if this is going to be kind of a popular opinion. I, I don't know. 
But my number one Scott Derrickson movie is Sinister. So Sinister, I quite like. Uh, my fiance and I, we, we seem to watch this movie like once every two years or so, I would say. Um, and and I'm, I'm completely okay with that because I really like this film. Ethan Hawke, once again, does such a great job in the lead performance. And it's a movie that's the premise... The beginning of the premise, I should say. It sounds kind of cliche, but then when you hear the rest of the premise, you're like, that could be really interesting. And thankfully, Scott Derrickson's directing here is really good. It's an R-rated movie that doesn't really have any blood, but it's rated R just because of the fear factor. And again, it's a really good film in that front. Um, not an amazing film per se, but it definitely is one of the better entries of the 2010s in terms of horror films. And um, yeah, I quite like Sinister. So you guys, that's my ranking for Scott Derrickson's films. Um, let me know your ranking of his films down below. But I did want to quickly mention Scott Derrickson's like style because I try to, I sometimes forget I'm human, but I sometimes like to talk about the director after the fact that, you know, I've ranked his work um, to see, you know, what my thoughts are on the director. And um, Scott Derrickson is an interesting case where he definitely is like a studio director where as you saw, many of these movies are blockbusters, but studios call upon him. And I think that within the studio system, he does a pretty good job. He makes it his own. And I like the fact that when you watch one of his movies, even if at the end result is something that's kind of like meh or disappointing, he still does a great job of reeling you in from act one and act two. And he knows how to pick performances like really good actors are in his movies. Um, is he one of the best directors? No, but he is a solid director. And, um, you know, when I hear his name, I, I got to say, I, I do look forward to seeing what he's going to be coming out with next. So anyways, guys, um, again, let me know your thoughts on Scott Derrickson's films ranked down below. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching with the subscription notification bell. And I will uh, catch you guys later and follow me on Letterboxd.